Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about the day in the life of a PACU nurse. If you're watching this video, it's probably because you're interested in PACU nursing, which means post anesthesia care unit. And you're wondering, what does that look like? Good question. I didn't know either. So I'm just going to try to let you know a little bit more about that today and answer any questions that you have in the comments down below. So the PACU nurses get to sleep in a little bit, which is nice. You don't have to get up quite as early as the pre-op nurse does. So your nurse manager will let you know what time you should be arriving. Usually that time is based on when the first surgeries will start or how long that they're expected to go until. So usually it's somewhere between 7.30, 8 o'clock, 8.30. Sometimes even later, honestly, if the surgeon's first case is a really long one. But they let you know specifically when to come in. Um, they do try to let you sleep in a little bit more, especially on days where the surgeons may go until like 8 p.m. So we try to be very considerate of that when we're doing the scheduling. So you'll arrive, and then usually there's some type of buffer there, so you have time to take a few sips of your coffee, like make sure that your patient station is set up. You know, you go over, make sure your monitors are turned on, make sure everything works. You're going to be hooking them up to that vital sign machine when they come out, so you're going to want everything to be ready to go. We usually lay out an ice bag if we know that they got a surgery done where they're going to want it to be iced. A pillow if we know we're going to need to elevate the extremities, say it was a knee procedure done, we're going to want to elevate that. So I always lay out a pillow and an ice bag as well as a thermometer because when you do your initial set of vital signs in the recovery unit, you are going to also get a temperature just to make sure that your patient didn't get too cold in the operating room. If they're a little chilly, we do have things called bear huggers, which are basically like reverse vacuum cleaners <laughs> that blow warm air. So we have the ability to hook them up to special blankets that really help warm up the patient and get them back to a comfortable temperature. So once your station is set up and you're ready to go, you wait until the OR nurse calls out and says, um, you know, OR1 to pack you with doctor so-and-so's patient and that's how you know okay that's my patient you may even need to communicate that to the other nurses that are there say hey I'm gonna take this one over here and they'll go oh, okay and it's just kind of based on the flow of the day there's not really any rhyme or reason to it most of the time it is based on when you arrive in the day so if you're the first person to arrive you shouldn't be the last one to take the patient <laughs> you should be taking that first patient that comes out so that patient will come out and then usually at this point you kind of have a whole lot of people surrounding the patient the crna the aka certified registered nurse anesthesiologist is usually going to come out with the patient or if a like MD anesthesiologist ended up being the one in the room, they'll come out with the patient. The OR nurse will also come out with the patient and you guys will all kind of work together to get that stretcher in the bay or the spot where you're going to hook them up to the vital sign machine. So you're going to be hooking them up and while you're hooking them up, the anesthesiologist is going to be giving you a report on the patient, how they did, any pertinent medical history or allergies, things like that, anything that you need to have on your radar and be aware of. They'll also tell you how much fluid they got, what medications they gave, etc. So once the patient's all hooked up to the vital sign machine and you've gotten them gotten that first set of vitals, you'll take the temperature, elevate that extremity, put that ice pack on, made sure that they're warm and comfy, hook them up to the warmer if necessary, kind of like tuck them in if you're anything like me, <laughs> a sucker for tucking them in, it's so satisfying. But anyway, <laughs> your anesthesiologist will then ask you if you have any other questions, your OR nurse will say, hey, are you okay? And at that point, you either say yes or no if you are, but usually at that point you are, so you let them kind of go and get ready for the next patient, help with the turnover, all of those things. And then you will be basically one on a one-to-one -one ratio with that patient until they leave. Now, sometimes it doesn't happen that way if everything is super busy and for some reason something happened with one of the other patients where they had to stay longer, you may end up needing to take two patients, but we try for that not to happen. We try for it to be a one-to-one -one ratio until that patient goes home. So you'll be monitoring the vital signs applying any appropriate therapies based on your nursing judgment, making sure their vital signs are stable and all that. But you'll also be kind of trying to help them wake up, give them refreshments when they wake up, and snack, drink, things like that. Make sure they tolerate it okay. And then once they're, you know, sitting up taking that food and drink and snack, then you can bring their family member or friend to come back and sit with them. Once you've done that, and hopefully you'll have, you know, documented all your vital signs and pertinent information that you needed to document, 
This is a good time to go over the discharge instructions with the patient and their family members. So you'll go over all of that, anything that the surgeon specifically stated that he wanted them to know, which he usually writes down, and answer any questions that they have, make sure they're good to go, and finish up any last vital signs. As long as everything looks stable though, you know, per your facility's policy and everyone is different, but ours, it's at least three sets of vital signs. Um, you can obviously do more if they're indicated, but if they're stable and they came out awake and they're not requiring any oxygen, they're doing just fine, there's no need to continue doing vital signs if everything is stable. So once everyone is good to go and they look great and they're ready, that's when we have them get dressed. Now sometimes the nurse helps them, sometimes it's a family member. It's really based on preference or if they have a tricky sling that they need to navigate and you need to teach them about that. But once they get dressed and everything like that, you have the family member go bring the car around and then you'll either wheel them out in a wheelchair if that's your facility's policy or at our place if they're ambulatory, like they can walk, they are allowed to walk out. We just walk with them and make sure that they're not feeling woozy or anything like that. If they are, of course, we take them out in a wheelchair. <laughs> but you will be required to walk the patient to the car and make sure that they safely get into the car and buckled up and ready to go. Make sure that they are not the ones driving. <laughs> that is definitely illegal because they're under the influence. Answer any last minute questions that they or their family member think of, like right as they get in the car, because sometimes that happens. And then just send them on their way and wish them luck. Rinse, repeat, basically all day. <laughs> you usually get natural lulls where, okay, I just discharged my patient. A lot of times somebody will help you clean off the bed and the area that you're working on. But if not, I at least always like to clean my spot and get it set up for my next patient so that I'm ready to go. And then at that point, if it's time for breakfast or lunch, you can go take your lunch break or breakfast break or whatever. Or you can jump in and help with any of the paperwork that needs to be done on the unit that day, like the pre-op phone calls, pack you, check up phone call, any chart audits that need to be done, things like that. You can always check with the nurse manager if they have things that they need for you to be working on. But other than that, it's just kind of a cycle, rinse, repeat. You have an anesthesiologist that's always around. So if you have any problems that arise with your patient, you're surrounded by nurses, you're surrounded by your anesthesiologist. So you have lots of support. So if there's ever an issue that comes up that you're uncomfortable or that you think that they need to be evaluated further, you have definitely plenty of resources to help you with that. The only downside is that you do end up staying a little bit later in the day, especially if there's a surgeon that is going really late. Like we have one that goes until eight o'clock a lot of times. So sometimes it's a long haul and you may be there, you know, it may be one patient, like a really complicated fracture and you're just literally sitting there for like two hours, just waiting for them to come out and everything else has already been done. There's nothing else that you can really find to do. I mean, sometimes we you know, we always find something, like you can organize little drawers with supplies or make sure everything's restocked for the next day. We also, you know, in the morning, we will check the blanket warmer and make sure that it's reading the appropriate temperatures. We check all the code carts, make sure all that is good to go. But other than that, it's just kind of rinse, repeat until you make it through all the patients. So that's kind of my overview of a day in the life of a PACU nurse. If you guys have any questions for me, just leave them down below and I'll try to answer them as quickly as I can. Thanks and I hope this helps. Take care. Bye.